Surprisingly, auto sales, the auto manufacturers finally are getting through supply chain issues. They're in the midst of increasing production by something like 20% this quarter. And what we got this week was kind of surprising. Auto sales dropped back down from 14.3 million. Now, steady state is 17 million. So they had not even gotten back to steady state, which is 17 to 18 million. um, And that's an annualized unit rate per year for the US. So 14.3. And the expectation was that that would just continue on up to a more normalized rate. Well, instead, in May, it appears auto sales dropped 12.7. So here we are again, if they build the inventory and the consumer does not come. In fact, the consumer retrenches. These companies are going to have too much inventory. In this video, I discuss the automotive valley of death, the end of legacy automotive manufacturers and the entire ice vehicle industry, why the so-called experts are getting it dead wrong, and what it means for Tesla. And Kathy Wood of ARK Invest shares her thoughts on the worsening economy and why legacy automotive manufacturers are completely and utterly f***ed. So, Let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. If you wanna take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store, So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Automotive Industry Valley of Death. Special shout out to JPR007, who you should all be following on Twitter. This is an extremely important thing to understand that none of the experts are getting, the general public, consensus opinion. People just cannot accept, understand, or believe that this is how things are starting to play out, nor how they will play out. But I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, like many of my past predictions, this is what the future looks like and no one seems to get it. Of course, there are a couple of exceptions. Now, I'm not here to endorse the exact numbers here. Instead, we're just talking about the trend because what's happening at the moment in the automotive industry, we're seeing the beginnings of the collapse of ICE vehicle sales. And when I say collapse, I mean collapse. Of course, due to supply chain challenges, issues, getting chips, blah, fucking blah, 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 the actual reality of what's happening here is being masked and disguised by what people believe to be short-term supply chain challenges, logistics issues. They're wrong. We are seeing the collapse of the ICE vehicle industry in free fall. Most experts are expecting to see a massive rebound in global automotive sales. They're gonna be unpleasantly surprised when the collapse continues to accelerate. So let's talk about what we're seeing here in general terms. In black here, we have ICE vehicle sales. In gray, we have projected ICE vehicle sales. In blue, we have actual battery electric vehicle sales. In light blue, we have projected battery electric vehicle sales. And the most important part here, natural demand minus ICE and battery electric vehicle sales. Let's talk through this a little bit. It's an extremely important concept to understand. Then we'll hear some comments from Kathy Wood describing exactly what's happening. The stuff that everyone's missing and not understanding. Starting over on the left here in 2006, we have automotive sales, basically 100% ICE vehicles. After the global financial crisis where we saw a short decline, a big rebound in vehicle sales, and then we start to see a decline. Automotive sales seem to have peaked in 2017, around the same time that some compelling mass market electric vehicles became available, shout out to Tesla's Model 3. What we can see here, based on these projections, and I'm not endorsing the exact numbers here, the trend is what matters. We're seeing a collapse in actual ICE vehicle sales. In fact, the entire automotive market contracting quite violently and the projection obviously ICE vehicle sales absolutely plummeting. By the end of the decade, you literally need brain damage to be buying or even producing ICE vehicles. Therefore, no more ICE vehicles being sold by end of decade. Of course, battery electric vehicles are here to save the day, right? Well, yes, but there is a slight problem. Electric vehicle sales here in blue are barely noticeable. Projections over time have a massive increase in battery electric vehicle sales, but As we can see, there's a slight problem. What we're looking at here is a catastrophic collapse, a huge violent contraction in global automotive sales for a period of time. As I've mentioned in the past, within just a few years time, consumers will literally need to be dumb to buy an ICE vehicle because it will cost more to buy. It will cost more to own, operate and maintain. It will be less safe 
It pollutes, it can't be updated and upgraded as easily with over the air updates as an electric vehicle and so on. I could keep going on. Once again, I wanna emphasize the point within just a few years time. Consumers will need to be dumb to buy ICE vehicles and automotive manufacturers will need to be even dumber to still be manufacturing them. The problem is, EV production isn't ramping up fast enough to close the gap. This is why it looks like the automotive industry is headed for a violent contraction and no one seems to get it. All the experts are expecting sales to rebound. Oh, well, you know, there was the pandemic and then there were supply chain issues. That's why the sales are collapsing. No, it's not. Consumer preferences are shifting now. Sure, this is contributing a little bit, but as I mentioned, the pandemic and the supply chain issues are masking the underlying shift in consumer behavior. EVs are the future. What we're witnessing here is the perfect storm, a combination of completely brain damaged legacy automotive manufacturers who are moronic enough to think that consumers are actually gonna want to buy ICE vehicles in the later half of this decade and are planning accordingly. We have increasing materials costs, supply chain challenges, issues, getting parts, components, and so on to actually produce vehicles consumers want to buy. Automotive manufacturers, some of which are still planning to be selling ICE vehicles here. I mean, seriously, brain damage. There's no other word for it. And just a single company scaling EV production at incredibly fast rates, dominating the competition and already producing compelling cost competitive electric vehicles that shit all over ICE equivalents. That would be Tesla. So humor me, let's just assume that the rough trends represented in this graph are fairly on the money, which suggests that the underlying demand here in green for automotive, the valley of death, is a representation of the gap between how many vehicles will actually be available for consumers to buy versus the enormously larger underlying demand. So. Here's a question. Let's just say that this is approximately right. What do you think might happen to the purchase price and the profit margins for compelling electric vehicles that consumers actually wanna buy? Keeping in mind, as I said, there is a gigantic gap between how many of these vehicles will actually be produced versus the enormous amount of demand for these vehicles. If you can't read between the lines, let me spoil it for you. There is a very, very, very strong probability that at least through half of this decade, the few companies mass producing compelling electric vehicles will have the luxury of selling them for absurdly high prices to the portion of consumers who can actually afford to pay a premium to get their hands on something because again, way, way, way more demand will exist than there is supply. And this won't change for many years, if not throughout the entire decade. And there is one final extremely important point. Given this prolonged shortfall in vehicle production, throughout the 2020s, give or take. Given the fact that today there's approximately 2 billion ICE vehicles on roads, which effectively all need to be replaced, it is quite probable that the global automotive market once EV production can ramp past previous peak levels, may actually continue to go on to more than double in size. Now, I don't know for sure, but let's just say hypothetically speaking, there was a company producing electric vehicles at scale. And by the end of the decade, they were doing, I don't know, let's say half a trillion dollars in profits every single year. Could such a company take advantage of a massively expanding global vehicle market due to the prior contraction, the valley of death, and maybe ramp production well in excess of say 20 million vehicles per year in 2030? Maybe all the way up to maybe 40 million, 50 million vehicles per year in the early 2040s. This is something to think about. Just one final thing before we hear some comments from Kathy Wood, effectively describing exactly what we're seeing here with the valley of death. Just play along at home here. Let's assume that by 2040, the global vehicle market, which is all electric vehicles at that point in time, has been for a decade, is in excess of 200 million vehicles per year. And let's just say that there's a company out there that captures one quarter of this market. That would be approximately 50 million electric vehicles sold in a single year in 2040. Remember, there's about 2 billion ICE vehicles that need replacing on roads today. Do the math. This is entirely possible and sustainable for a long period of time. No matter where you look, the data for automotive sales at this point in time looks dire. We are seeing a collapse in sales from just about every manufacturer on the planet, with the exceptions being those exclusively producing compelling electric vehicles, which would be um, um, Tesla and um, who else? Oh wait, uh, no one else. We're looking at US automotive sales here. We're looking at some declines in the last few months. If you guys wanna pause and really soak it up, go for it. In short, bold figures on the left here. We've got declines from Ford over 13%, Honda down 36%, Kia down almost 14%, Mazda down almost 20%, Subaru over 20%, Toyota down almost 20%, Volvo down almost 20%, and the average literally down 20%. Once again, I wanna emphasize the excuse, the reason, supply chain challenges, 
can't get the materials, can't get the parts, can't make the cars. It's not demand at all. It's just, we, you know, we can't make the cars. We, we promise. Of course, we know the truth is actually this. We are seeing the collapse of ICE vehicle sales being masked by these temporary supply chain challenges. And now over to ARK Invest's Kathy Wood, who shares some thoughts and the latest data regarding, you guessed it, US automotive sales. Surprisingly, um, auto sales. The auto manufacturers uh, finally are getting through supply chain issues. And according to Wards, their plans were to increase production, or they're in the midst of increasing production, to something by something like 20% this quarter. And what we got this week was kind of surprising. Uh, auto sales dropped back down uh, from 14.3 million. Now, steady state is 17 million. So they had not even gotten back to ste steady state, which is uh, 17 to 18 million. Um, and that's an annualized uh, unit rate per year for the US. So 14.3, uh, and the expectation was that that would just continue on up to a more nor normalized rate. Well, instead, in, uh, in May, it appears uh, auto sales dropped 12.7. So here we are again. If they build the inventory and the consumer does not come, in fact, the consumer retrenches, uh, these companies are going to have too much inventory. This is really important to understand. If a company produces a product, a complicated, large, manufactured object that costs them a lot of labor and resources and materials and parts to actually build, and then it sits around instead of being sold to a consumer, they don't get any revenue, they can't pay for that, therefore they're bleeding money. We're seeing a massive buildup of inventory here from legacy automotive manufacturers who naively, idiotically, in fact, moronically expected, oh yeah, the demand's gonna rebound, pr oh, yeah, <laughs> everyone wants to buy a nice car, right? Turns out they're learning an invaluable lesson here. Here. This is not true. Not sure how long it's going to take these Muppets to figure it out, but people don't want to buy their ice vehicles anymore. And the more time passes, the more true this will be for even more consumers. Once again, I want to reiterate, we are literally seeing this play out in real time, yet legacy automotive manufacturers are naive to what's actually going on. They're confused about the reasons as to why consumers aren't buying their vehicles. There's only one way this ends, catastrophically. At least if you make ice vehicles. What a surprise given all the supply chain issues we've been hearing about. Uh, in the manufacturing sector, the, the number of uh, the gain in employment was about half that expected. 18,000, I think 39,000 was expected. The other thing that did not get, I didn't see any mention, was um, the work week, the average work week in the manufacturing sector went down and overtime went down. So I think this is the first indication uh, that we're seeing that inventories are piling up and, uh, and uh, the manufacturing sector is beginning to retrench. And then um, using Nancy Lazar's, so Piper, Piper or Sandler's numbers, uh, they are tallying up the number of hiring freezes and layoffs uh, companies are announcing. Uh, and in total, uh, since February, 61 companies, this is US-based, have announced uh, freezes or, uh, or layoffs. And uh, just yesterday, as uh, you probably know, uh, Tesla said that it was going to lay off 10% of its workforce. Today, uh, it clarified that it's not the manufacturing part of the uh, labor force, it is the white collar. So uh, that's, that's pretty interesting as well. So Tesla massively expanding, increasing their manufacturing headcount, massively increasing their production capacity globally at this point in time, selling compelling, profitable electric vehicles consumers can't get enough of and are willing to wait literally six to 12 plus months to get their hands on. Meanwhile, the data shows that overall, there's a lot less manufacturing activity happening at this point in time. So Tesla increasing manufacturing, yet everybody else overall, down. It's almost like Tesla's disrupting an entire industry or two. Don't think about that too much. Now, there is one other thing that I want to discuss here, going back to the whole value of death. Legacy automotive manufacturers at this point in time, generally speaking, have the following plan to successfully transition to electric vehicles. Continue to produce ICE vehicles at massive scale. After all, at this point in time, they're the only vehicles these folks produce that actually make any profits. The problem is, within a few years, this will no longer be true. The profits they're counting on to allow them to fund their transition to EVs throughout the rest of the decade 
Again, keeping in mind some of these morons still think they'll be selling ICE vehicles in 2030, 2031, 2034. Not going to happen. They're counting on profits for these ICE vehicles to not go bankrupt while transitioning to EVs. Take the ICE profits, invest those into your unprofitable EVs, eventually reach scale, and eventually you'll be able to sell profitable EVs too. The problem is the timing's off. If consumers stop buying ICE vehicles, that means they're producing less, they benefit less from economies of scale, they start making less profits on the ICE vehicles. You guessed it, it's a death spiral. We're also seeing housing, all kinds of housing metrics going south now. Uh, affordability has collapsed. A combination of uh, a significant increase in mortgage rates and pricing is pricing consumers out of the market. And consumer sentiment, I'm sure, is not helping the situation. I mentioned autos. So you've got housing and autos, two of the most cyclical parts of the economy uh, going down right now. Used car sales, uh, I, I should also mention, are down about 20% year over year. Now we're seeing new new car sales down sequentially, and they're down also, also more than 20% on a year over year basis. These are, these are big declines. Uh, so we think that's going to start backing up into the price of used cars, which will then in turn back up into the secured, uh, the secured credit uh, um, instruments out there backed by uh, used cars. Uh, uh, the residual value of used cars and new cars will be going down if, uh, if we're right and, and the economy is as weak as these sectors are suggesting. It's important to understand exactly what Cathy Wood was getting at here, okay? For those of you who are unaware, most automotive manufacturers today, huge portions of their business are actually financing their ICE vehicles to consumers. I'm sure many of you watching have financed a vehicle before. The way these work, you secure the debt against the asset. The asset has a certain amount of value. All's good and well, except there's a slight problem. If the value of the assets that this debt secured against collapses, which Cathy Wood said is extremely likely, if we're right, they are. What do you think happens to all the debt tied to these things? Suddenly the loan to valuation ratio gets absolutely ridiculous. You have a big problem. When I say big problem, I'm talking about the destruction of potentially hundreds of billions of dollars of value, of assets, and equivalent amounts of debt going bad. This is going to be a fucking bloodbath. Uh, so we're we're waiting here. I if I, I, I often use the word wily coyote or the, the the idea of wily coyote, you know, running, 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 and running off the cliff, not realizing it until he looks down and then boom. Because I love you guys and girls so much, I've prepared an animation of exactly what Kathy Wood was saying. Please pay attention on the screen now. This is exactly what's happening currently to legacy automotive manufacturers who think demand is going to be rebounding, but unfortunately. It is not. Uh, this reminds me very much of 1986. Yes, I did say 1986. Oil prices were stubborn, 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 levitating. And, you know, the cartel even had more power back then. Um, and it levitated until it was clear that demand destruction uh, was not going to allow uh, for the pumping of oil at the rate uh, OPEC and others were pumping it. I think the same thing's going to happen now, especially uh, now that the U.S. Uh, uh, or oil producers can hide behind uh, national security as they are starting to uh, pump more oil. I think next year, within the next year, we'll be up to an all-time high in oil production again, and we'll, we'll be perhaps perhaps will be the largest producer in the world once again. I won't be surprised if we see this play out. This may cause legacy automotive manufacturers to gain a little bit of false hope. Look, oil production's going up. This is great. People are still interested in gasoline powered cars. The problem is, as I mentioned earlier, the economics mean within just a few years time, consumers will literally need to be morons, irrespective of how much oil is being produced locally or not. We'll have to be morons to be buying ICE vehicles. And at this point in time, per the Wiley Coyote example, it does not end well. I can't for the life of me understand how the people running legacy automotive manufacturers haven't figured out what's going on yet. They don't realize their sales are collapsing. They don't realize demand is collapsing. They don't realize, like Wiley Coyote, that they've shot over the cliff and they're now in free fall. Idiotically, they thought, oh, well, if we just build the vehicles, people will buy them, right? Because they used to buy them. Now that they're starting to alleviate some of the supply chain challenges and produce the vehicles, they're discovering, wait, huh, that's kind of weird. Consumers aren't actually buying the vehicles and we're building up enormous amounts of inventory. Wonder why that would be. We thought if we kept making these things, people would buy them. After all, you know, we're still going to be selling these 
is in 2033, right? Wrong. The good news is, well, there's not a lot of good news unless, of course, you happen to be a company that's profitably producing electric vehicles that consumers can't get enough of at scale. But unfortunately, I'm unaware of any companies that fit that descriptor. But please let me know in the comments below. If anyone watching knows a company like that, please comment below because I'd really love to buy some of their stock. If such a company did exist, however, during the bloodbath, the destruction, the collapses, the bankruptcies, the government bailouts, and the next bankruptcy, the mergers, the acquisitions, the collapse, the destruction, the debt going bad, and so on, such a company that were producing profitable, compelling electric vehicles that consumers couldn't get enough of would be able to get out the metaphorical mop and bucket and absolutely clean up. Just such a shame I can't find a company like that out in the marketplace. Bummer. And lastly, don't forget, you can join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment. You'll gain access to my Tesla stock price targets. Massive recent update has just dropped, plus well over 100 exclusive Q&A videos, loads of other exclusive content and perks. So see you over on Patreon. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store if you want to take it to the next level join thousands of members on patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 q a videos loads of exclusive content exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year tesla stock price targets and even access my tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above so check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support and if you're still watching you're awesome i read every single comment on this channel and i really appreciate your feedback so if you've got any thoughts on today's video questions comments or suggestions for a new video let me know in the comments below check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store join patreon or watch the next video